clippings and masks because you guys loved my first episode on this so i'm gonna bring you guys three more that are going to be absolutely amazing it's gonna be this guy this guy and this guy let's get started okay everybody so the first one is really about carving a subject out from some sort of photo that you want to put into your layout okay uh, and we're gonna actually use the help of Photoshop here. So I'm gonna go over to Photoshop. Okay, so once we're in Photoshop and we have the photo that we want uh, right here on the screen. Now we're using Photoshop because it is a lot easier to get the object out of the image. All we're gonna go is go up to here and you can see that there's an object selection tool. If you don't have that, right click on it and probably it's on magic wand tool, you just have to select object selection tool. Now, once you mouse over your subject, you can click on it and it'll do a pretty good job of selecting everything for you. Now, it, you might not get everything, so you can also go back. I like to just use the polygon lasso tool, zoom in and just make sure you hold control when you want to add selections. I'm just gonna get the parts that it didn't get. Okay, after we're pretty satisfied with our selection, all we're gonna have to do is right click on the selection we just made, go down here to make work path, and then we can leave the tolerance on two pixels. If you want it to be more precise, you can change that. I'm gonna leave it there. You can see that it actually turned it into a nice path. Now we're gonna go down here to where the layers are, and then we're gonna go over to path. Now. We're gonna name this something like path one, just so that it can be identified in InDesign. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this image. It can be saved either as a JPEG or it can be a Photoshop file, it doesn't matter. Then we're gonna go all the way back to InDesign. So once we are in InDesign, we can actually drag and drop that image or Photoshop file, it doesn't really matter, wherever you have it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that in. Then we're going to go ahead and click on this image. We're going to go up to objects. We're gonna go into our clipping path and then we're gonna hit options. So you can see that the type is going to pop up. We're gonna go down into this selection and you're gonna see Photoshop path. That's great. And all we have to do is just click okay. And you can see that it's created a very nice clipping path around our actual subject. And so what we can do now is we can actually move this so that it's bigger, we can fit it into the frame, we can move it it's smaller, it will occupy the entirety of the frame. All you have to do is move it to a place that you like, that you want your subject to be, and that's basically it. Then all you have to do is spice it up and you got yourself a really nice and easy way to make any subject pop in any layout. Okay, the next one we're gonna make is gonna look something like this. So this one's a little bit harder to make, but before I get into it, I just wanted to say, if you guys find any value in this video, please hit the like button, it helps the channel a lot. And if you guys need to get Adobe still, make sure you get it from the link in the description. It'll help the channel a lot. Uh, it's affiliate link and I do get a portion of it. So I really do appreciate you guys for keeping this channel going uh, and let's get back into it. So this layout relies heavily on text and text clippings. So what we're going to do first is actually go over here to the type tool and we're going to go ahead and just create a big text box. Now I'd like it to be, you know, something that is more rectilinear. So I'm actually just gonna type in LYH, Stu, and then DO in three separate lines, just so that there are three letters each. Got that nice aesthetics going. I'm gonna change it to a font that I like. So for this, let's do Futura and we'll do extra bold. Now it doesn't matter what font it is. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just so I can see it. What we're going to do is highlight our text box. We're going into type and we're going to create outlines. What this will do is basically make this into a vector that we can edit. So you see that if I drag the, the size out, it'll actually adjust itself. Now, because everything is in one text box, it's gonna be in one single group. All we have to do to ungroup is right click and just hit ungroup. So now we can select all of these by itself. I'm gonna bring them just a little bit closer and I'm going to select everything and also make it a tad bigger. Now, the great part is, as soon as we made those letters into outlines, they're already frames that we can put images in. Let me show you what I mean. So, if I have an image that I really want to put in here, I can actually just drag and drop an image straight into the frame. And if I do a fitting command, so right click, fitting, and then we'll do fit frame proportionally, I can actually just drag this around, move it, and just play around with it until you get a layout that you are happy with. 
If I want the little card just peeking out a little bit, I can do that. I'm gonna do this for the second row, but the third row, I'm gonna show you guys something else that's super cool. Okay, now that we are on our last line, I wanna show you guys something that is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is actually drag out a rectangular tool. So the shortcut key is M, and what I'm going to do is just go halfway through the DIO here. And then I'm going to select both the DIO and the rectangle I just made and go into my Pathfinder. If you guys don't have this, it's going to be in Window. It's going to be in Objects and Layouts. And then you just have to switch on Pathfinder. Now, if I again select everything and then I go here into the Exclude Overlap, it's basically going to make something that is super cool. Let me show you guys. So I'm gonna select the frame and I'm gonna drag an image similar to what we did with the other tool. And I'm going to just fit this as well. You can see that actually it's got a really cool effect. So it's got a weird outline. I'm gonna switch that off, but you can see that actually the top of this is filled, the bottom is not. So that's already pretty cool. And what you can actually do in addition to that is if I drag another block, let's say this, and then I change the fill to this, and then I right click, go into arrange and send it to back. You can see that actually this will take the, the color of whatever's in the background. So I'm gonna change this to a color that I like a little bit more than completely black. But yeah, isn't that great guys? This is a super useful one. I'm gonna adjust this maybe a little bit so that we just have the chair like that. And again, spice this up a little bit with text and some other elements and you got yourself an amazing looking layout. All right guys, for the third and final one, we're going to do something like this. And it's going to mainly revolve around having these nice shapes that we can clip into. So first we're going to just go ahead and right click and we're actually gonna use the ellipse tool for this. And similar to how we did it with the text, you can simply drag out shapes and they basically immediately become frames. So let me show you guys. This, I'm going to drag out maybe a couple of these frames. So uh, let's say we wanted something like this, have some smaller ones. And you know, I can drag some out that are uh, basically not uh, together with the rest of them. And you know, maybe some small ones over here, something like that. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna select absolutely everything on this page, go into Pathfinder, and then we're gonna use this one, Add. So you can see that it's basically made everything into one complete path. And what you're going to do is find your image, drag that in, and then again, I'm going to fit this with uh, the frame. And it, again, it has this weird outline. I'm gonna get rid of that. And boom, already you have something that looks pretty great. Now, alternatively, there is something else that you can do if you want this other effect. I'm gonna show you guys that as well. So here, if I go into the ellipse frame tool, I can basically try to create a similar shape. So let me just disable preview, which is W to see that. Uh, and you're gonna see the difference between these two when I try to do this. So again, I'm dragging out all, all these different bubbles like this. Once I'm happy with the shape, then you can go ahead and select everything. Select everything. Uh, I'm gonna deselect whatever's on the left. We can actually go up to objects. We go to path and we make a compound path. Now that'll also make this into one united picture frame. And we can basically put the same image in here, but you'll see that it's gonna do something a little bit different. So if I do the same thing and fit it, you can see that actually where these frames overlap, it's going to be cut out. So depending on whichever effect you want to see, make sure you're using that effect. But now that you know both of these, you can put them both on your resume. And you know what, speaking of resume, check out our website. We have resume templates for you guys that are free of charge. So get them while you can. I know the market is really rough for jobs right now. So hopefully that helps out. Another cool thing that you guys can do is if you actually make more of these circles, Let's say I want this to be actually white. What I can do is select both of these. And again, we're going to Pathfinder. And if we just do the exclude overlap, uh, we might have to drag it all the way back in once again, but it's okay, no matters. Then you can see that the cutout here is also an amazing effect that you can integrate into whatever design that you want to do. So play around with this until you are happy with the results. And then all you have to do is spice it up with some text. So that's it. That's all we have for these three amazing layouts. I hope you guys have learned something new. If you did, please don't hesitate to leave a like on the channel and subscribe and share with your friends. 
If you would like to see something in particular next, please let me know down in the comments. It would help everybody a lot. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys used the, the super easy way to clip things in design. If you used anything that was basically taught here, I would love to see it. Share with me on Instagram. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.